Hi there. This is a demonstration of the COVID-19 Port of Entry Surveillance application developed by Demagi. This template application was built on Demagi's open source software, ComCare, and is available free of charge. The template application was designed based on WHO guidelines for the management and screening of travelers at air, sea, rail, and land ports of entry. Inspiration was drawn from existing port of entry screening forms, such as the Traveler Public Health Declaration form, the Passenger Locator form, and the Secondary Screening form. The application allows you to quickly collect key information that helps screeners to identify potential risk of transmission, including the traveler's current temperature, symptoms, and recent exposures. For travelers that are identified as high risk, you can also register the travel companions and close contacts of travelers. Most importantly, this application has been designed to integrate seamlessly with the COVID-19 tracking application developed by Demagi. Based on the WHO First Few Cases protocol, this means that a port of entry surveillance user could refer suspected cases and their contacts directly to a COVID-19 tracking application user, allowing teams investigating suspected and confirmed cases to follow up more quickly. I'm now going to demonstrate the process of screening a traveler suspected to have been exposed to COVID-19. In addition, I'll register one of their travel companions as a close contact. The application also allows you to screen and clear travelers who have a low risk of exposure or transmission. I'll start by logging in. On the home screen of the application, I see an option to screen the traveler. I'll start by screening a new traveler and specifying the date and time of the screening and then recording some information about myself as the screener. I've logged in as a user, Jonathan Smith. You can see that the app has already loaded some information based on this user's profile. I will then record some details about the traveler's mode of travel to help me locate other travelers who may have come into contact with this person. I'll then register the traveler himself, John Doe, and record his passport details. I can input some demographic information about John, like his sex and date of birth, as well as his contact information in case public health officials need to follow up with John at a later time. I'll move ahead to the screening process and start by recording John's temperature. When I input a number above 39 degrees Celsius, the system alerts me that John has a fever. I will then record symptoms that John reports, including a cough and shortness of breath, and I'll specify the date of the symptom onset. I will then report on John's potential exposures to the COVID virus and document his travel history to get a clearer picture of his risk exposure. For example, whether John came into contact with a confirmed case of COVID, or whether he worked in a health facility where confirmed cases were being treated. I'll also record John's travel history to get a clearer picture of his movements over the past couple of weeks. I'll also specify whether he traveled to an area where the COVID-19 virus is widespread. After that, I will assess the results of the screening. Since John is screened positive for all three risk factors, fever, symptoms, and exposure, I'm going to recommend that he be referred for secondary screening for further evaluation. The system informs me that John has been referred and will now appear in the list of high-risk travelers. To find John's case again, I can select the Manage High-Risk Travelers list. I can see John's case along with some key identifiers, like his passport number. When I select his case, I'm able to see the details that I captured about him during the primary screening process, along with details about the interview itself. To follow up with John's case and conduct a secondary screening, I click Continue and then enter the secondary screening form. This form will display all of the information I recorded previously, along with some additional questions about John's symptoms and exposures. This allows different screeners to see the most up-to-date information about each traveler. I'll go ahead and select a few additional symptoms and additional details about John's exposures and other risk factors. For example, I'll specify that he has diarrhea, nausea, and a headache. And I'll confirm that he spent time around people that had confirmed cases of COVID-19.
I will then record John's emergency contact, Jane Doe, in case he needs to be referred to a hospital for medical treatment. I will input her phone number, address, and relationship to John. I will confirm that the secondary screening process has been completed and that John has been allowed to enter the port. However, because of his symptoms and exposures, I'm going to refer John to the local public health authorities and health facility for additional evaluation. I'll now register one of John's travel companions. Because they travel together, many details about the contact's mode of transport are pre-populated based on John's traveler details. I'll pretend that I'm now logging in as a different user and record that the data collector is Amy Johnson. I'll register John's contact, Angela Doe, and record a few basic details about her including sex, date of birth, and relationship to John. I'll specify that Angela is John's sister, so I'll mark her as a family member. I'll also capture her local contact information and preferred mode of contact so her public health authorities can get in touch with her in the future, if necessary. Because the app has been designed to seamlessly integrate with the WHO FFX template application, users could refer contacts to local public health authorities and share all of the details that they're collecting here. Finally, I'll specify what type of contact she had with John to help me identify her risk of exposure. Now I can select View Travel Contacts to see the list and details of all contacts and companions registered to the traveler John. If I navigate back to the main menu, I can also see a list called View Medical Referrals. This should show me a list of travelers that have been referred to local healthcare facilities, like John. I can review traveler details, or even select their phone number to call or text the traveler to follow up with them after they've been referred to a medical facility. Port of entry or public health officials can also use the application to keep a record of how many travelers are screened on a daily basis and how many of those travelers are referred for medical treatment or additional evaluation.